Uh, when you go to fill up your car with gas this weekend, in most cases, not everywhere, but in most instances, when you go to fill up your car with gas, you will find that the business end of the gas pump looks a little bit like this. There is the uh, triggery handle thing that you squeeze to make the gas come out of. On the right there, there is the uh, little nozzle part that the gas comes out of. But over the nozzle part is the part that we have circled in yellow there. It's this big black plastic hood. That big black plastic hood has been there uh, in, most, in, in gas stations in most places in the country uh, since 1994. See, most of the air pollution, most of the smog, right, caused by uh, burning gas as a fuel for cars is what comes out of the tailpipe of the car. But we also cause air pollution and we cause smog uh, in the way that we fill up our cars with gas. The gas fumes that escape while you are pumping gas into your car, those fumes are air pollution. And that big black rubber hood thing on the gas pump was designed to capture the fumes while you were pumping gas. So yes, you are still putting gas into your car, which when you burn it in your car will create air pollution. But you are avoiding creating a second source of air pollution with the big stink of fumes when you fill up. Since the black hood thing went into place, uh, since that regulation was put into effect back in the 90s, Auto manufacturers have changed the way that gas tanks are designed. They've changed it to accommodate that concern about the fumes that escape while you're filling up. So for nearly 20 years, we have been counting on that big black rubber plastic thing on the hose to take care of the big stink air pollution problem when you fill up at the pump. But now, because auto manufacturers are taking account of it, they are taking care of that problem inside the car. Uh, they've rebuilt gas tanks so that the gas tanks themselves in the car actually deal with most of the problem. Because of that, those big black plastic rubbery hood things that go over the gas pump nozzle that make it a little bit harder to fill up your car, but they make it a lot harder to fill up your motorcycle or your gas can, those big black plastic rubbery things over the um, gas pump nozzle thing, those are going to go away. Quote, the Obama administration and the Environmental Protection Agency announced Thursday they intend to phase out the rubber boots on gas pump handles now used to capture harmful ga gasoline vapors while refueling cars. The White House decision is part of the latest government-wide review of federal regulations. According to a statement from the president on this, quote, we will remain vigilant when it comes to eliminating regulations that are not necessary or that impose unnecessary burdens on America's families and businesses. Getting rid of the regulation that requires that big plastic boot on the gas handle, the White House says, uh, will save the people who own gas stations uh, a few thousand dollars, and that will in turn make your gas prices lower, which is better for you and better for the economy. Now, depending on whether or not your car actually has an upgraded gas tank that will capture the fumes so that the gas pump handle doesn't have to, this rule, getting rid of the hood on the gas pump handle, may also result in you getting a little high for free the next time you fill up. <laughs> so maybe that's kind of a benefit, too. I mean, provided what you feel is high rather than just sick or asthmatic. But hey, they were looking for a regulation to get rid of, and they decided, looking at the gas pump handle, that this was the regulation they were going to get rid of. On the campaign trail, uh, former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney has spent all week saying that he does not want to talk about being super anti-gay rights. He definitely doesn't want to talk about medical marijuana. He definitely doesn't want to talk about contraception or abortion. I mean, he has policies on these things that he wants to pursue once he becomes president. But he does not want to talk about these things while campaigning. Unless he's talking to a very specific audience that's going to love him on those subjects. Uh, we'll be talking about that more on later in the show. Um, what Mitt Romney says he wants to talk about, instead of all that other stuff, right, what he says he wants to talk about is the economy. He wants to talk about the economy and the Obama record that he says has been so bad on the economy. And when you let Mitt Romney do that, when you let him talk about what he says is the thing he wants to talk about in this campaign, the reason why he's running, this is what he says. Hey, Mr. President, you're getting it all wrong. He has more than doubled the number of regulations, the rate of regulation he's adding to our, to our nation across America. Regulators just multiplying like proverbial rabbits and, and making it harder and harder for enterprises to, to, to grow and, and to, to understand what their, what their future might be. This administration's uh, regulations are even invading the freedom 
of everyday Americans. Regulations invading the freedom of everyday Americans. You, you know, this, this is not a, a sidebar or a boutique or niche issue for the Romney campaign. This is essentially their central critique of what is wrong with the Obama administration. This is the main argument that they've got against Barack Obama on the economy. It is the main reason they say that Mitt Romney should replace President Obama in the White House. It's the main thing that he wants to talk about. It's how many new regulations Barack Obama has put into place. Barack Obama has put fewer regulations into place than George W. Bush did. There were more new government regulations created in the first three years of the George W. Bush administration than there were in the first three years of the Obama administration. Barack Obama has slowed down the pace of new regulations when you compare him with the last guy, who was a Republican. So it is not true when Mitt Romney says that President Obama is creating some unprecedented number of new regulations. A shorter way of saying it is not true is to say it is a lie, and it is a lie. But even if it is a lie and you say it frequently enough, you sometimes can make people believe it's true. If you make it the centerpiece of your presidential campaign, one of two things can happen. You can be laughed off the stage for being a liar, which does not seem to be happening to Mitt Romney, or people can start to believe this lie you say every day. And that raises an interesting question about this really, really specific policy about the gas pump, this gas pump thing that's about to change. Almost everybody who uses a gas pump in America is about to experience directly the elimination of a government regulation on something that you physically have to personally deal with to put gas in your car. Does that have a political effect? Could that have a political effect? Does that translate at a retail politics level? Does that counter this Republican argument from Mitt Romney that Barack Obama is regulation happy. I mean, your direct experience at the gas pump is about to be that this president has gotten rid of regulations. It's a very subtle thing, but subtle things like this can have a powerful impact when you are talking about something that may really stick with people and that affects millions and millions of people. The political impact of the way that you personally interact with something about the government, the way that you personally experience a policy change or the effect of something that a politician did, that can affect in a lifelong way the way that you think about that policy, the way that you think about that politician. And that individual effect part of politics is something that Republicans have long appreciated. In 2008, before the big financial crash, but when the economy was slowing down, uh, President George W. Bush passed a stimulus act. What? Republicans? A stimulus act? Yes. George W. Bush passed two stimulus acts, actually. He did it in 2001 as well. You know, Reagan had a big stimulus act as well. So did George H.W. Bush. I know it's crazy, but that is actually the way you deal with recessions and economic slowdowns. It is normal, and both parties do it, no matter what you hear these days on Fox News or on the crazy part of your radio. But when George W. Bush passed his stimulus act in 2008, the political geniuses of the George W. Bush administration decided to get money out into the economy, to pursue stimulus, to get money out into the economy that Americans would spend to jumpstart the economy. They decided to distribute that money just by sending everybody a check. A check made out to you from the Bush administration. Here's some money. It's from the government. Please go spend it. I'm not kidding. This is what they did. These rebates will provide eligible Americans with payments of up to $600 a person, $1,200 for couples, and $300 per child. Every man, woman, and child in America getting free money from the government. Thank you, George W. Bush. Uh, as, you, as you saw there, he called it a rebate. But it, this wasn't a rebate. You weren't overcharged for something. Your child getting this $300 check had not paid too much money to the government and therefore needed to get $300 back. They called it a rebate, but it was just a check from George W. Bush to you. Please spend it. It was a government handout. Not that there's anything wrong with that. This is political genius because, I mean, at a very base level, dude's giving you hundreds of dollars for nothing. It kind of makes you like the guy, right? I mean, policy-wise, it was not as much of genius as it was in political terms. Political terms, this is very, very smart, right? But in, in policy terms, it did have a weakness. If you send somebody a check for $300 or $600 or $1,200, I mean, most people's instinct is not to take that check to the bank, flip it over, sign it, get all that money back in cash, and then spend all that cash immediately. I mean, some people might do that, but overall, most people, the instinct will be to deposit the check, to not spend all of it at once. 
But in, in terms of the whole economy, the point of doing the stimulus is that you really do want people to spend that money you're, spending, you're, you're sending them. You want them to spend all of it or as much of it as possible. I mean, saving may help you as an individual, but it does not help an economy in need of stimulus. It's not what you do a stimulus for. You want spending. So rather than sending everybody a lump sum check like George W. Bush did, a much better way to stimulate the economy is to give people money in a way that doesn't encourage them to just save it. Give people money in a way that doesn't make as much of a splash. I mean, just put, you know, 20 or 40 or 60 bucks in everybody's paycheck every couple of weeks. If you get the money that way, you're likely to just spend 20 or 40 or 60 more bucks than you otherwise would have spent. The more low key you make it, the better policy it is as stimulus. But you do have to give up that great moment, right? You have to give up that Ed McMahon publisher's clearinghouse handing over the big check political benefit that you get from doing it in this loud and splashy but less good way. The George W. Bush administration did it in the loud and splashy but less good way. When President Obama did a stimulus, they did it the way that is better for the economy, but doesn't give the president as much credit. When Obama did it, they decided to do the stimulus uh, in part in form of a payroll tax deduction. So everybody got a few more bucks in their paycheck every couple of weeks. It stimulates the economy way more directly and efficiently. But the cost is there's no check in the mail moment that makes you like the president who sent you the money. And the policy is better, but the cost is that the president does not get credit. Ah, Democrats, of course they do it that way. But in today's news, there is a sign that maybe Democrats are learning a lesson on this type of politics. It's not a lesson about policy. It is a lesson about how to get credit for policy. There's a chance that you may be about to get a Publishers Clearinghouse Ed McMahon style check from Obamacare. Mark Halpern wrote about this at Time Magazine today. The Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kathleen Sebelius, uh, is blogging about it today at the White House website. Health reform, or as the Republicans call it, Obamacare, is one of these things that if you ask people about what's in it, they really like what's in it. I can still get insurance without a pre-existing condition? That's great. I can still get insurance if I have a pre-existing condition. Excuse me, that's great. Uh, they can't make your insurance more expensive because you're a woman? That's great. Kids can stay on their parents' insurance until they're 26? That's great. The, the things that are in health reform are things that people like. These are very, very popular policies. But when you ask people if they like health reform, heck no, I hate health reform. Well, do you know what's in it? Keep it down, I'm busy hating health reform. But yes, I do like all the things that are in it. Uh, one of the things that is in health reform uh, is something to keep the costs of health insurance low. It's a requirement that whatever your health insurance company is charging you for your health insurance, they have to spend at least 80% of that on healthcare, on actually providing you healthcare. So advertising and bonuses for their CEOs and generic overhead costs, which don't actually result in you getting any healthcare, that has to be less than 20% of what you pay. They call it the 80-20 rule. And the punishment for companies that don't meet that requirement is genius. It's political genius. Companies that have been overspending on stuff that is not healthcare, companies that have been wasting your healthcare premiums on executive bonuses or whatever who aren't meeting the 80-20 rule, those companies have to pay the difference back to you in a check that is made out to you that comes with this cover letter. Quote, this rebate is required by the Affordable Care Act, the health reform law. Honestly, they should just add to it. You know, Obamacare. So, so the policy here, it's kind of a generically popular common sense idea. If I'm gonna to have to spend money on health insurance, don't waste my freaking money on CEO bonuses. But to make that not just a generically popular common sense concept, but instead to make it something that you know you are personally benefiting from in a dollars and cents way, thank you Obama administration, thank you Mr. President, thank you Mr. President's Signature Health Reform Act, the benefit of that policy is now going to show up physically in your mailbox in the form of a check with a tiny little Ed McMahon. I'm sorry, no, Ed, Ed McMahon is dead. That will not be true. But the, the, the retail, I did this for you, I am the check in your mailbox political salesmanship idea, that is not dead. Democrat, Democrats are learning this game too, at last. Ka-ching.